Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's BDL44 coming at you with another video. So it just dawned on me that I hadn't ever addressed this, and I've been kind of thinking about it for a while. Um, it's not a bad thing or something that you have to be like, uh-oh. Uh, but I just set it up this way. I I'm hearing, you know, comments, I guess is the way I want to phrase that. But I've, I've read comments on uh, what Damian Lillard has, has basically said in regards to this era. This era is... Uh, you know, teaming up with one another in regards to that kind of thing. And he just felt like he was too too real for this era. He, he You know, he's more old school. He wants to compete. He wants to do it that way. He don't want to leave Portland. And, like, this is my thing. When you're – and I don't know. Dame, I, I don't think Dame is 30 years. I'm pretty sure he's not. He's probably, like, 27, 28. Mature, though. Y'all know Dame's demeanor and his, his actions, his principles, all that shit. What he stand for – he stands for real shit, and he don't play no games. He's one of those guys where, you know, that's a serious man, you know. Some people you can tell they're serious people. Dame is a serious man, so I understand that part of it. Um, I feel like <laughs> I sound like Steve, Stephen A. Smith trying to address Russell Westbrook yesterday, but that's not what I'm trying to do. All I'm saying is this. When you get to a certain point in your life, and I, I'm, I'm always mention my age. I'm 36, about to be 37. When you reach a certain point in your life, a lot of the stuff that you tend to hold your hat on in terms of principles and stuff like that, it, it definitely still matters. And we respect those principles and we respect seeing those principles in people who are younger than us. But what it seems to me from where I'm standing at this point in my life, a lot of those principles tend to be focused on sacrificing things that you don't necessarily understand how it feels to not have those things long term if that makes any sense that's what age is teaching me in other words like for example i maybe had a lady in my life at 28 years old maybe i didn't cherish her like i should have because for the wrong reasons maybe she didn't meet my aesthetics or or she wasn't uh, meeting some criteria or something. This is just an example. It's not real. But like maybe she didn't meet some dollar amount example. Maybe my girl needs to be rich. Whatever, right? This is prime example. And then you fast forward 37 years of age, can't and I can't find a girlfriend. I don't, I'm not in a relationship. Don't have no kids and like that. Maybe if I would have just let go of some of those laurels, some of those morals, some of those ideas, whatever the case may be, some of those standards, if I would have let those go. Maybe today my life would be better because I'd have a whole family or at least the experiences of being in that situation in a relationship, seeing that path through, seeing where it would take me instead of the path I'm on, which is alone, right? Now, some would say, well, you dodged a bullet. Maybe that's no good. But I don't know what I dodged, actually. All I know is that my consequences did not end up the way that I wanted them to. And my intention was to just simply stay away from stuff for the wrong reasons. In this, in this situation, it's Dame staying in Portland for the wrong reasons. You want to be loyal to them, even though you know they ain't going to win nothing. They ain't never winning nothing with you on the roster because they can't afford to do so, or they don't know how to put together a team, or the competition's too thick for them in their timeline for you. It's not going to align. It's going to take too long for them to get as good as you need them to be. All that stuff. And that's not Portland's fault. That's not Dame's fault. That's not something that Dame shouldn't have the right to live with if he wants to. If he wants to go down with the ship, let him go down with the ship, right? But I think a lot of times... Players like Dame, who are these serious people who have these type of morals, who have these type of standards, who have these type of, of, of codes that they must live by, they don't realize that 15 years from now or even six years from now, when the career is over, they would have wished to God they would have had a championship ring more so than standing on these these standards and these morals and, and, and being this person that they want to see others become. I'm a firm believer in being the good that, good that you want to see in the world. Right. But this ain't that type of situation. This is not good or bad. This is just a choice of whether or not you're going to stay in a situation that's not successful and give your all to it or walk away. Join the era that you're in because you have to be a part of the era that you're in. You can't act like this is 1975 where you, you know, going up against one superstar on every team and half the team can't play. You don't get to do you don't get to dictate those terms, unfortunately. Now, would it be nice if everybody came back down to earth, everybody joined their own team, maybe the NBA expand to like 36 teams so these guys can't team up without ruining the league and then they just, you know, maybe that's maybe that's your ideal league. 
But that's not the NBA in 2021, the era that you are in your prime in. The era you're in your prime in, you got Brooklyn Nets existing, you got the Lakers existing, you got the Clippers existing, you got the Nuggets existing. These teams are all better than you. And they're going to get better than you as the time progresses. At 28 years old, when your body is still moving as fresh as it is, and you're still in your prime, you can't see aging. You don't see your body slowing down later, even though you know it's coming. You don't feel the effects of that yet because your body's still moving. So you think you can keep doing this for another eight, nine years. You're damn certain that your career is going to probably last another eight, nine years. So if you want to dedicate it to Portland, it's like, well, I'm going down with the ship. I don't know what all you weirdos are doing, but the time keeps passing. While you're sitting in that space looking around at all them weirdos winning championships, time keeps passing. You're getting older. Your body does start to slow down. You ain't quite getting off the floor as quick. Your first step ain't quite moving as fast. You don't recover quicker enough uh, as you used to from injuries. Now you're looking around and everybody got championships but you. You was real as hell. You rich as hell. But everybody's lumping you in with Chuck, AI, people like that who we love very much but never want a damn thing. Reggie Miller. You ask any one of them dudes. Any one of them. Carl Malone, ask any one of them if they want to, if at 28, didn't they feel the same way you feel right now? Kevin Garnett, talk to Kevin Garnett. And, I'm, and this is addressed not only to, 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 to Dame Lillard, but Bradley Beal, Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's a lot of y'all out there who are trying to buck the grain of this team up LeBron KD era, and you can't do it. You are ruining your careers by standing on this empty type of standards for your careers. This empty, I'm going to be loyal to this team no matter what. I'm going to go down with the ship even though we don't have the talent. And I'm going to look around and be sad, but that's just what real dudes do. No, that's what people who don't know that losing sucks long term do. Guys who don't understand that they're going to want, wish they had championships. That people are going to talk about their careers and not mention some of the things that they want to be mentioned because they didn't win. You're going to hear other names be mentioned above Dame Lillard, a dude that you know damn well wasn't better than you. But why? Because they joined championship caliber teams and they won shit in this era. <laughs> I speak like this with this type of passion, this type of energy, because I don't think, I don't think that a lot of players who live with these standards, who are of the caliber of game, Dame Lillard, get spoken to this way at all I would imagine they have yes men I would imagine they have friends that believe in them people who believe in those morals that they stand by people who respect those characteristics so they don't want to uh, pull those people away from those characteristics for fear that they will go all the way to the other side just, just have no morals if they can't stick to particular codes but when it comes to success bitterness follows those who don't chase the success that they ultimately desire now, if you don't desire that success or you don't find championships to be your success, that's a whole other story. But I don't look at Dame Lillard and say that shit. Russell Westbrook came out and said that he was a champion without a ring. He made his stance in that regard. He's comfortable without winning a championship. This is why I would not address him this way. Before a guy who's younger than him, somebody who maybe hasn't lived through the, the seasons of losing and losing and losing and losing yet. Maybe it's only year nine as opposed to year 11, 12, whatever it is for Russie. I would even ask Russell, are you sure you don't want to join a super type team? Because honestly, this is, your, this is the truth for you too, man. They're going to lump you in there with people that you deserve to be ranked ahead of. And some of them dudes who are ranked below some of these champions should not be. And some of the guys didn't have a choice. They were stuck in bad situations. They couldn't get off bad teams. A guy like Russell Westbrook, prime example, Chris Paul. They can't get off of teams that aren't quite great enough because of the, champ the comp contracts that they signed before they realized how important this may have been to them. I look at Dame Lillard. Doing it in Portland may be a big deal. But you can't dictate those terms, man. You would love to think you can. It would be dope if something great happens. Maybe something amazing happens. You hold the, keep the faith. Maybe something happens. But the likelihood of something not happening is so much higher, man. When you got your team trading away young 21-year-old jump shooters who can score the ball like at will for, for another guy who can pretty much do the same thing who's just a couple years older. 
Like, these are the type of moves Portland's making. Like, I'm not trying to be upset or trying to upset anybody who's a Portland fan, but, like, Terry Stotts. Like, how long do you want Terry Stotts to be your coach and continue to bring you to the first round or second round and you get bounced every single year? Like, if you're going to be loyal, find a good situation to be loyal to, not just the one you were inherited in. And then just stand on that and say I'm a real dude because I, because I could I can do something that the rest of y'all can't. I could sit here in a losing situation that I didn't even choose and just sit here and wallow away and and not get the credit I deserve because that's some real dude stuff. No, that's not real dude stuff. That's misguided stuff. The reality is you're gonna be judged by the championships and your numbers and your merit. That's how it works for you as an athlete. All three, championship, numbers, and merit. And a lot of times guys don't get that. They'll get two out of three, one out of three. It's all three that matters, man. We, we respect you right now because of your merit and because of your numbers. But you got to go somewhere and get that damn chip. Dame. Uh, uh, Bradley. Bill. Come on. Like, I'm talking directly to these players and anybody in these situations who will ever see this video. Don't be Kevin Garnett. Don't be Reggie Miller. Don't be Charles Barkley. Do not retire without a ring when you could have had an opportunity to get one because you couldn't swallow your pride and join t join forces with somebody great <laughs> you can't coexist with great players that means you're not prepared to win that means you're not capable of winning in this era you may not like playing with great talent why one wouldn't want to play with great talent when they're great themselves I don't understand that. I don't pretend to understand that. Competition is important, but this is how you compete. You ain't going to play chess with a half of your pieces to start the game. That's essentially what you're doing when you're signing up for a bad team and stay there in this era. It's not about wanting to start the process of joining forces with someone else because that environment has already been laid out for you. You didn't create the environment you're in. If you want to compete in it, you need all of the pieces necessary for it. Not what you have in your mind is what you what others used to do or what should be, but what actually is. And what actually is, is Terry Stotts and the Portland Trailblazers ain't about to win a championship, my friend. They're not going to win. And that's not me being a naysayer. That's me being a fan of the NBA for the last 27 years. I know when a team ain't got it, they, ain't, they don't have it. And they're not going to have it anytime soon. Dame, your present is your prime. If you waste your career there, you will regret that. I don't care what your mind and your heart and your soul is telling you now. As you grow older, if you stay in a bad situation and forego opportunities to win it all, that will be something that will burn you for a while, if not forever. Look at the rest of these guys. They, look, look, at how they, look at how Shaq is. He throw his rings at Chuck's face every time he see. He get a chance to. You can't sit at this table because you don't have rings. <laughs> we know damn well Chuck was a great player. If he would have happened to find himself on the Spurs in the right year, he would have been a champion. And his conversation, the conversation around his name entirely different. Even if it was a championship in his last year. That's why I'm not mad at a guy like LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin. Because ain't nobody going to remember when they won it. Just that they won it. Did they get it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Gary Payton. Does anybody talk of Gary Payton as somebody who didn't get a ring? Let's just be honest. Gary Payton. Why isn't he lumped in there with John Stockton and Steve Nash? Why isn't he locked, lumped in there with other guys who didn't get a ring? Because he got one. He got one with the Heat. Does anybody? A lot of people, when you look back at Gary Payton's career, you think about when he won a championship. Some people may mistake it and think he got a championship with the Lakers. He didn't win it that year. He won it after that. That's how far into his career he got it, and he will never be lumped in there with nobody who didn't win it because he did. Get one. That's the moral of the story. Make sure you walk away with hardware, Dame. You're too damn great, too damn clutch to give your to sell your career, your whole career, to a average franchise, bro. Average. Average. My name is BDL44. I'm just being all the way honest. I don't want to see guys wasted careers, especially when they're elite like Dame Lillard. Elite, man. I've seen this movie too many times. It pisses me off every time. I never liked that movie. I don't even stay for the credits most of the time. 
I want to see great players get championships, and I don't want them to stand in their own way in doing so, especially being loyal to a, cha- a team that's going to trade you away as soon as you're too old to do what it is that they want you to do. Hell no. Nah. We've seen that movie before, Dame. Stop doing that. Don't be Kevin Garnett on that one. Don't be Reggie Miller on that one. My name is BDL44. I'm out.